welcome to the online class lecture of Professor S. K. Paul, HOD University Department of English, BR BR University, Muzaffarpur. Dear students of PG Semester 1, CC2, Unit, uh, uh, Unit 1, a critical, it is a drama Hamlet. Uh, today, I am going to deliver my lecture on uh, uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet and the title is A Critical Appreciation of Shakespeare's Hamlet. Hamlet is a revenge tragedy written in the line of uh, a Roman Senecan, a Roman Senecan tragedy. It is the tragedy of reflection and moral sensitivity. The protagonist is very reflective and too sensitive, thus unfit for taking revenge through action. He has to undo the past, but the paradox of guilt and justice baffles him. The soliloquies of Hamlet help to bring out uh, his complex uh, mental state. Uh, when the play ends, uh, all the major characters are dead, uh, making the tragedy an absolute one. Hamlet's father uh, has been uh, murdered by his uncle and his mother uh, marries the criminal after her husband's death, as suggested by the ghost Hamlet has to Hamlet has to take revenge on his father's murderer. As he is a person uh, with a high degree of moral sensitivity and a philosophic bent of mind, he thinks about whether evil can undo evil and uh, evil can undo evil and not remain evil. He wants to find out whether the ghost has told the truth or not. He thinks too much and cannot go into action, uh, without which revenge cannot be taken and the tragedy occurs. The soliloquies are given to him uh, to help uh, reveal, to help reveal uh, his complex uh, psychological state. It's the tragedy of moral frustration, the tension between Hamlet's need for revenge and the question of morality. Questions of morality. Morality, uh, guilt, justice, as well as his uncle and mother's position is vividly dramatized. Inaction is the major tragic flaw which hastens uh, his tragic downfall. Had Hamlet been Othello, the tragedy would not have occurred. His, philosoph his philosophical, his um, occurred, just a minute. Inaction <coughs> is the major tragic flaw. Inaction is the major tragic flaw which has since his tragic downfall. Had, uh, had Hamlet been Othello, the tragedy would not have occurred. His philosophical soliloquies make it a poetic play rather than a realistic one. Ophelia, her father and brother die primarily because of Claudius's conspiracy and Hamlet's impulsiveness. Though the conspirator, though the conspirator is killed, uh, many other innocent people uh, uh, lose their lives. It is a great disintegration. Since all the characters die at the end of the play, the throne has to be given uh, to a foreigner. It is an absolute tragedy in a way. The horror, violence, and bloodshed on the stage create a kind of uh, unnerving, uh, uh, unnerving scene. 
the readers cannot help feeling pity and fear for what has happened. Hamlet by, Shakespeare, by William Shakespeare. Uh, William Shakespeare is the tragedy of a young man named Hamlet. His fragile idealism, shattered by his father's brutal death, uh, causes him to lose faith in humanity. Uh, when his, uh, um, his fragile idealism shattered by his father's brutal death uh, causes, uh, causes, uh, causes him to lose faith in humanity. When his late father's phantom visits him, he persuades Hamlet to take revenge against his uncle Claudius, his father's true executioner. Hamlet feigns madness and in his so-called um, unrestful stage he devises he devises his plan to take retribution. Throughout the play the death of a character becomes a frequent event although most people lose their lives because of their own self a uh, uh, cantered wrongdoing and uh, there are a few whose death is caused by manipulation and deceit. In this case, it is the family of Polonius. Uh, con uh, contrary to popular belief, the tragedy, the tragedy of Hamlet is uh, uh, neither about him nor of his family. It is, however, the tragic fate of Polonius's family, because their deaths were not the consequences of their own sinful actions, rather by the innocent involvement in the schemes of Claudius and Hamlet. Although some may say that Polonius deserved his death because of his uh, surreptitious style, even though all he was uh, really doing was following the king's uh, inclinations. Polonius was slain by Hamlet after having been mistaken uh, for the king. The next to die is Ophelia. She is entirely manipulated by Hamlet and the king uh, for their own selfish reasons. The next to die is Ophelia. She is entirely manipulated by Hamlet and the king uh, for their selfish reasons. She killed herself after knowledge of her father's death. Last to die was Laertes. It is easily seen how Laertes, in the heat of his anger, could conspire to murder. Though he kills Hamlet, he is avenging his father's death, an act with reference to the moral climate of the 1600s. Therefore, it is condoned. Laertes, in his attempt to kill, uh, loses his life by the very poison that was to uh, kill his enemy. Hamlet dies on a poison-tipped uh, sword, but not till he has killed Claudius and uh, ridded uh, Elsinore of its plague. Shakespeare utilizes character, plot, and setting to create a mood of disgust and the theme of proper revenge. He uses these elements as brush strokes to paint a powerful picture. He employs the castle of Elsinore and its uh, vicinity to depict uh, a sordid and a depressive place uh, where incest, uh, incest and murder, uh, murder is a 
is a normal part of life where revenge is a commonplace motivation and where feigning of madness is a normal excuse to disassemble one's feelings shakespeare incorporates other subplots into the play without these subplots of revenge we are left with a, a lugubrious play where the ending although necessary is pointless Shakespeare created uh, this setting to tell us a story of revenge gone wrong. He created disgust, and when we look back and see the depraved way of life that existed in Castle Elsinore, we see the room littered with dead and uh, fourteen brass taking uh, his uh, rightful throne among the uh, among the vengeful. There is also a bit of. A foreshadowing found in Hamlet all the way in the beginning. Hamlet drawing on biblical allusions. Hamlet redefines the position of man as simply that which that which came from dust and eventually uh, well written. Uh, it is possible that Shakespeare was trying to indirectly warn us of Hamlet's fate or of the fate of Polonius or Claudius. Uh, please don't talk, please don't talk. Class is going on. Hamlet, our hero, the martyr of Elsinore, young, handsome, daring and witty, an emotional soul with a violent uh, temper. He exhibits uh, a puzzling, uh, duplicitous nature. Uh, nature. He contradicts himself throughout uh, the play. He endorses both of the virtues of acting a role of being true to oneself. He further shows both of these conflicting endorsements uh, with his actions. This ambiguity uh, by his alleged madness only to become perfectly calm and rational later. These inconsistencies are related uh, to the internal uh, dilemmas he faces. He struggles with uh, avenging his father's death. Throughout the entire play, uh, he uh, teeters on his issue, on this issue. Uh, because he is unable to form a solid decision about his role playing. Hamlet is an uh, over analytical and pessimistic, but what leads to his downfall are one fatal flaw his, uh, his procrastination. He had he had several chances to kill Claudius, but he seems to lose that conviction after his rationality sets in. Yet we feel no sympathy towards Hamlet, not because he does not have any sympathetic qualities, but because, because too few sympathetic qualities for us to wish to emphasize. Hamlet eventually does the right thing, but it is the way he does right thing in the wrong way that makes us condemn him. Hamlet thinks too much. He spends uh, too, too much time deliberating the action uh, whether, whether than uh, taking action. Taking action. Hamlet is uh, uh, Hamlet is uh, uh, is dour in in fact every character in the play uh, in the play is dour. The only two characters that show any joy de vivre are the clowns who are the um, are the morticians. It is ironic that uh, that the two characters who enjoy life most are those who face death on a regular basis. Despite for his bad qualities, he does have several good ones. He is very daring and brave. A story holds several examples of his fearless attitude. There are two major examples. First is 
when he uh, follows the ghost. Hamlet, not knowing whether this is a real ghost or deception, perhaps the uh, devil himself, despite this, he still uh, followed this transparent apparition. The second major act of bravery is when he is sent to England to his inevitable death. His cognitive dissonance saves his scheme. Hamlet suffers moral destruction throughout the play. In Hamlet's cosmic view on the planet, he finds the world to be empty and lifeless, dirty and diseased, and his particular place in it to be desolate and lonely. He feels so isolated and entrapped in his native land. The world in his prison, Denmark, uh, the world is his prison, Denmark, uh, being the worst, a good, a, a, a goodly one, a goodly one, a goodly one in which there are many confines, wars and dungeons, Denmark being uh, one of the worst. Uh, the character of Hamlet is very believable. Uh, very believable. In fact, uh, I think that Hamlet identifies a uh, better with an adolescent of the 1990s more than he does with the youth of his time. Hamlet is immature, sarcastic, and takes action in the heat of passion, which is very much like the radical behavior of today's youth. Hamlet's maturity level for his time was low especially low especially him having such a high position he is extremely offensive to people such as the king the queen an immature a mouthy extremist is uh, the inability to love maturely and rudeness towards authority are just a few of the things that he shares with today's youth it is to my belief that he would have an easier, uh, easier time, easier time, um, easier uh, living uh, during my time rather than his own. Laertes and Hamlet, although adversaries, exhibit very similar characteristics. Uh, they both display impulsive reactions and rash behavior often acting emotion rather than uh, rationality. Laertes, consumed with rage, automatically thrusts out attempting to kill Claudius, assuming him his father's killers. Both their imprudent actions are incited by fury and frustration. Sudden anger prompts them to act uh, spontaneously. Laertes and Hamlet both share a deep love and concern for Ophelia. <clears throat> Laertes provides a lengthy advice to Ophelia uh, before leaving for France. Although both individuals despise each other, they are both infatuated with her. Laertes is also similar to Hamlet in the way that he associates, he associates with his family. Laertes and Hamlet hold a high admiration for their fathers immediately seeking revenge on the assassin. They both exhibit a domineering attitudes toward females. Laertes is able to control Ophelia's opinion of Hamlet and his general attitude towards women. In the same way, Hamlet can easily persuade Gertrude of his sanity and manipulate into making Claudia seem like a fool. Disillusionment, depression, uh, despair, these are the burning uh, emotion, emotions churning emotions churning in young Hamlet's head, head as he he attempts to come to come to terms with his father's death and his mother's incestuous illicit marriage. <clears throat> While Hamlet tries to pick up the pieces 
of this shattered idealism, he consciously embarks on a quest to seek the truth hidden in Elsinore. This is a stark contrast to Claudius's fervent attempts to obscure the truth of the murder. The truth of the murder. Deception versus truth. Illusions versus reality. Throughout the play, the themes of illusion and uh, mendaciousness have been carefully developed. The entire royal Danish court is ens ensnared in a web of espionage, betrayal, and lies. Uh, not a single man speaks his mind nor addresses his purposes. As Polonius uh, po uh, puts it so perfectly by uh, uh, in directions, uh, uh, find directions out. Uh, one of the main themes of the play is revenge, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but revenge is not always right. We often find that when we get over the initial shock and the rage, our emotions balance, uh, balance out and uh, out, and our grudge uh, fades away. But to act and but to act on impulse can cause deadly, uh, deadly repercussions. One which time will not heal. The play is the perfect example of such an instance. While trying to exact revenge, uh, the killed, uh, the killed, uh, their minds, their souls, uh, and eventually their bodies. Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, has remained the most uh, perplexing as well as the most uh, popular of William Shakespeare's tragedies, whether considered a, as literature, philosophy, or drama. Its artistic stature is universally admitted. To explain the reasons for its excellence in a few words, however, is a daunting task. Apart from the matchless artistry of its language, the play's uh, appeal rests uh, in large measure on the character of Hamlet himself, called upon to avenge his father's murder. He is compelled to face problems of duty, morality, and ethics that have been that have been human concerns uh, uh, through the ages. The play has tantalized uh, critics uh, with uh, what has become known as the Hamlet mystery, that of Hamlet's uh, uh, complex behavior, most uh, notably his indecision and his reluctance to act. Freudian critics have located Hamlet's motivation in the psycho, psychodynamic triad of the father-mother-son relationship. According to this view, Hamlet's, Hamlet is disturbed and eventually deranged by his uh, Oedipal jealousy of the uncle who has done what. Uh, Freud claimed all songs, all sons, uh, all sons long to be themselves. Other critics have taken the more conventional tack um, of identifying as Hamlet's tragic flaw, the lack of courage and moral resolution. In this view, Hamlet's indecision is a sign of moral ambivalence that, uh, that he overcomes too late. Both of these views uh, presuppose a precise discovery of Hamlet's uh, motivation. However, Renaissance drama is not generally a drama of motivation, either by psychological character or moral predetermination. Rather, the Renaissance tendency um, is to present characters with uh, 
well delineated moral and ethical dispositions that are faced with dilemmas. It is the outcome of these conflicts, the consequences rather than the process that normally holds center stage. What Shakespeare presents in Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, is an agonizing confrontation between the will of a good and intelligent man and the uncongenial role that of avenger that fate calls upon him to play. The role of avenger is a familiar one in Renaissance drama. In the opening description of Hamlet, as bereft by the death of his father and distressed by his mother's hasty marriage, Shakespeare creates an ideal candidate to, uh, to assume uh, such a role. Hamlet's uh, despondency need not be edible. Uh, to explain the extremity of his grief, his father, whom he deeply loved and admired, is recently deceased and he himself seems to have been robbed of his birthright. Shakespeare points to Hamlet's shock at the Gertrude's disrespect to the memory of his father rather than, than, his, love, than his love for his mother as the source of distress. distress. Hamlet's suspicion is reinforced by the ghostly visitation and the revelation of murder. If Hamlet had simply proceeded to act out the Avenger role assigned to him, the play would have lacked the moral and theological complexity that provides its special fascination. Hamlet has, after all, been a student of theology at Wittenberg, and his knowledge complicates the situation. His accusation of incest is not an adolescent excess, but an accurate theological description of a marriage between a widow and her dead husband's brother. Moreover, Hamlet's, theologi Hamlet's theological accomplishments do more than uh, exacerbate uh, his uh, feelings. For the ordinary avenger, the commission from the ghost of a murdered father would be more than enough. But Hamlet is aware of the unreliability of uh, other worldly apparitions and consequently reluctant to heed the ghost's injunction to perform an action that to him seems objectively evil. In addition, in addition, the fear that his father was murdered in a state of sin and condemned to hell not only increases Hamlet's sense of injustice, but also paradoxically casts further doubt on the, on the reliability, reliability of the ghost's exhortations. <coughs> exhortation <coughs> for the ghost may be an infernal spirit goading him to sin. From its uh, premiere at the turn of the seventh, at the turn of the seventeenth century, Hamlet was remained Shakespeare's best known, most imitated, uh, and most analyzed play. The character of Hamlet played a critical role in Sigmund Freud's explanation of the Oedipus complex. Even within the narrower field of literature the play's influence has been strong. As Fox writes, no other character's name in Shakespeare's plays and few in literature have come to embody an, atti an, uh, an attitude to life and been, uh, and been converted into a noun in this way. 
interpretations of Hamlet in Shakespeare's day were concerned with the play's portrayal of madness. The play was also often portrayed more violently than in later times. The play's contemporary popularity is suggested both by the five quartos that appeared in Shakespeare's lifetime and by frequent contemporary references though at least some of these could be uh, to the so-called uh, our amulet, your amulet, your amulet. These allusions suggest that by the early Jacobian period, the play was famous for the ghost and for its uh, dramatization of melancholy and ins insanity. The procession of mad courtiers and ladies in Jacobian and Caroline drama uh, frequently appears indebted to Hamlet. Other aspects uh, of the play uh, were also remembered. Looking back on Renaissance drama in 1655, Abraham Wright uh, louds uh, the humor of the uh, grave diggers uh, same scene. Uh, although he suggests that Shakespeare was outdone by Thomas uh, Randolph, whose uh, uh, farcical comedy, The Jealous Lovers, uh, features both uh, a travesty of Ophelia and a graveyard scene. Uh, there is some scholarly speculation that Hamlet may have been uh, censored during the peri this period. Um, um, uh, theatres were closed under the Puritan Commonwealth, which ran from 1640 to 1660. When the monarchy was restored in 1660, theatres reopened. Early interpretations of the play uh, from the late 17th to early 18th century typically showed uh, Prince Hamlet uh, as a heroic figure. Uh, uh, critics responded critics responded to Hamlet in terms of the same dichotomy uh, that shaped all responses to Shakespeare during the period. On the one hand, Shakespeare was seen as primitive and untutored, both in comparison to later English dramatists uh, such as Fletcher, and especially when measured measured against the neoclassical ideals of art brought back from France with the Restoration. On the other, Shakespeare remained popular not just with mass audiences, but even with the very critics made uncomfortable by his ignorance of Aristotle's unities and decorum. Thus, critics considered Hamlet in a milieu which abundantly demonstrated the play's dramatic viability. John Evelyn saw the play in 1661 and in his diary um, he deplored the play's violation of the unities of time and place. Yet, by the end of the period, John Downs uh, had noted that Hamlet, Hamlet was staged more frequently and profitably than any other play in, bit, in better tones uh, repertory. In addition to Hamlet's uh, uh, worth as a tragic hero, Restoration critics focused on the qualities of Shakespeare's language and above all on the question of tragic decorum. Critics disparaged the indecorous range of Shakespeare's language with Polonius's fondness for puns and Hamlet's use of mean, that is, low expressions such as there is the rub receiving particular attention. Even more important was the question of decorum, which, which in the case of Hamlet focused on the play's violation of tragic unity of time and place and on the characters. Jeremy Collier attacked the play on both counts in his short view of the immortality and, and profaneness of the English stage published in uh, 1698.
comparing Ophelia to Electra, he condemns Shakespeare for uh, allowing his heroine to become immodest in her insanity, particularly in the flower scene. Collier's attack occasioned a widespread, uh, often a vituperative controversy. Hamlet in general and Ophelia in particular were defended by Thomas uh, Durfee and, and George Drake almost uh, immediately. Drake defends the play's justice on the grounds, on the grounds that uh, they, that the murderers are caught. <clears throat> in their own toils, that is, traps. He also defends Ophelia by describing her actions in the context of uh, her desperate situation. Uh, Durfee, uh, by contrast, simply claims that Dennis has discerned, uh, discerned immorality in places to which no one else objected. In the next decade, Rowe and Dennis agreed with Collier that the play violated justice. Shepsibury and others defended the play as ultimately uh, moral. Criticism of the play in the first decades of the 18th century continued to be dominated by the neoclassical conception of plot and character. <clears throat> Even the many critics who defended Hamlet took for uh, granted the necessity of the classical canon in principle. Voltaire's attack on the play is perhaps the most famous neoclassical treatment of the play. It inspired numerous uh, uh, defenses in England, but these defenses did not at first uh, weaken the neoclassical orthodoxy. Thus, Lewis Theobald explained the seeming absurdity of Hamlet's uh, calling death an undiscovered country. Not long after he has encountered the ghost by uh, hypothesizing that the ghost describes uh, purgatory, not death. Thus, William Popple in 1735 praises the very similitude of Polonius's character, uh, deploring the actor's tradition of playing him only as a fool. Both Joseph Edition and Richard still praised particular scenes. Still, the psychological insight of the first soliloquy and addition, the ghost scene. The ghost scenes indeed were particular favorites of an age on the verge of the Gothic revival early in the century. George Stubbs noted Shakespeare's use of Horatio's incredibility to make the ghost credible. At mid-century, Arthur Murphy described the play as a sort of uh, poetic representation of the mind of a weak and melancholy, a melancholy person. Slightly later, George Coleman, the elder, singled out the play in a general discussion of Shakespeare's skill with supernatural elements in drama. In 1735, Aaron Hill sounded an unusual put, uh, but uh, but but uh, mm, uh, prescient note, uh, uh, note when he phrased that, that seeming contradictions uh, in Hamlet's uh, uh, temperament, rather than condemning them as uh, violations of decorum. Already before the Romantic uh, period. Proper critics had begun to stress uh, the elements of play that would cause Hamlet to be seen in the next century as the epitome, as the epitome uh, of the tragedy of character. In 1774, William Richardson sounded the key notes uh, of this analysis. Hamlet was a sensitive and accomplished prince with an unusually refined moral sense. He is nearly incapacitated uh, by the horror of the truth about his mother and uncle and the struggles against uh, that horror to fulfill his task. Richardson, who thought the play should 
have ended shortly after the closet scene. Thus saw the play as dramatizing the conflict between a sensitive individual and a callous and a calloused steamy world. Henry Mackenzie uh, notes that uh, the tradition of seeing Hamlet as the most uh, varied of Shakespeare's creations with the strongest purposes of revenge, he is irresolute and inactive amidst the gloom of the deepest melancholy. He is gay and jocular, and while he is described as a passionate lover, he uh, seems indifferent about the object of the affections. With the strongest purposes of revenge, he is irresolute and inactive. Like Richardson Mackenzie concludes that the tragedy in the play arises from Hamlet's nature. Even the best qualities of his character merely reinforce his inability to cope with the world in which he is placed. To this analysis, Robertson, Thomas Robertson, uh, adds uh, in particular the devastating impact of the death of uh, Hamlet's father. By the end of the 18th century, by the end of the 18th century, psychological, uh, psychological and textual criticism had outrun strictly rhetorical criticism. One still sees occasional, occasional critics of metaphors viewed as inappropriate or barbarous, but by and large the neoclassical critic of Shakespeare's language had become moribund. The most extended critic of the play's language uh, from the end of the uh, century is perhaps uh, that of Hugh Blair. Another change occurred, uh, occurred right uh, around the Romantic literary period, 19th century, known for its emphasis on the individual and internal motive. The Romantic period viewed Hamlet as more of a rebel against politics and as an intellectual rather than an overly uh, sensitive being. This is also the period when the question of uh, Hamlet's delay is brought up as previously it could be seen as plot device. So while romantics focused largely on character, Samuel Coleridge, for example, delivered lectures on Hamlet during this period that evaluated his tragic state of mind in an interpretation that proved influential that proved influential for over a century for Coleridge, shakespeare depicted hamlet's light of uh, indecisiveness uh, uh, as resulting from an imbalance between the human attention to external objects and inward thoughts and thus suffered a paralysis of action because his faculty of uh, vivid imagination overpowered his will and induced an aversion to actually enacting any measure for colonies. Shakespeare aimed to convey the basic message that uh, man must act and not be trammeled by excessive thinking that only leads to delay. Later criticism has come to consider this view as much a reflection, a reflection uh, of Coleridge's own problematical nature as an insight into Shakespearean character. At around the turn of the 20th century, two writers, A.C. Bradley and Sigmund Freud, developed ideas which built on the past and greatly affected the future of Hamlet criticism. Uh, Bradley held the view that Hamlet should be studied as one should study a real person, <coughs> piecing together his <coughs> consciousness from the clues given in the play. 
his explanation of hamlet's delay was one of uh, one of a deep melancholy which grew from a growing disappointment in his uh, mother fried also viewed hamlet as a real person one whose psyche could be analyzed through the text he took the view that hamlet's madness merely uh, disguised the truth in the same way dreams disguise unconscious realities he also famously saw hamlet's struggles as a representation of the oedipus complex in fried's view hamlet is torn largely because he has repressed a sexual desire for his mother which is being acted out by and challenged by claudius later critics of the century such as t s eliot in his noted essay hamlet and his problems downplayed such psychological emphasis of the play and instead used other methods to read characters in the play focusing on minor characters such as gertrude and seeing what they reveal about hamlet's decisions eliot famously called hamlet an artistic failure and criticized the play as analogous to to the mona lisa in the in that both were overly enigmatic Eliot targeted Hamlet's Hamlet's disgust with his mother as lacking an objective correlative. Uh, uh, his feelings were excessive in the context of the play. Questions about Gertrude and other minor characters were later um, taken under wing uh, by the feminist criticism uh, crit uh, criticism movement as. criticism focused more and more on questions of gender and political import current new historicist historicist theories now attempt to remove the romanticism surrounding the play and show its context in the world of elizabethan england the scholar margareta de uh, gracia Uh, finding that uh, much of hamlet uh, as scholar she focused on the psychological dedicated her work hamlet without hamlet to understand the political in the play indeed the scholar linda charnis echoed this notion in her review article of the next there is no figure in shakespeare's canon more explored expounded upon analyzed psychoanalyzed reconstructed reconstructed appropriated situated and and ex, uh, expropriated than hamlet prince of denmark d gracia points out that many related words in the play such as adama like adam from the garden of eden stone and ham land have multiple meanings and that some of these meanings are political uh, through their conferred concern with land land dramatic structure in creating hamlet shakespeare broke several rules uh, one of the largest being the rule of action over character <coughs> in his day plays were usually expected to follow the advice of aristotle in his poetics which declared that a drama should not focus on character so much and as action the highlights of hamlet however are not the action scenes but the soliloquies uh, where in hamlet reveals his motives and thoughts Uh, to the audience also unlike shakespeare's other plays there is no strong subplot all plot folks are directly connected to the main vein of uh, hamlet uh, struggling to gain revenge the play is full of seeming discontinuities and uh, irregularity and irregularities of action at one point hamlet is resolved to kill uh, claudius in the next scene uh, he is suddenly tamed uh, scholars uh, still debate whether 
these odd blurred plot turns are mistakes or intentional additions to add to the play's theme of confusion and duality. Hamlet's statement in this scene that his dark clothing his dark clothing is merely an outward representation of his inward grief is an example of his strong rhetorical skill. Much of the play's language embodies the elaborate witty vocabulary expected of a royal court. This is, this is in line with uh, uh, Baldassare uh, Castiglo uh, Castiglione's work. The courtier published in um, 1528, which outlines uh, uh, several uh, courtly rules, uh, specifically advising servants of royals to amuse their rulers with their inventive diction. Osric and Polonius. Osric and Polonius seem to especially respect this suggestion. Claudius's speech is full of rhetorical figures, as in, as is Hamlet's, and at times Ophelia's. While Horatio, the guards, and the grave diggers uh, use uh, simpler methods of speech, Claudius demonstrates uh, uh, an authoritative control over the language of a king, uh, referring to himself in the first person plural and using anaphora mixed with the metaphor that darkness back that that uh, harkens back to Greek political speeches. Hamlet seems the Hamlet seems the most educated in rhetoric of all the characters using anaphora as the king does, but also uh, uh, as in Deton and highly developed metaphors, while at the same time managing to be precise and unflowery as when he explains his inward emotion to his mother, saying, but I have that within which passes show these but the trappings and the suits of who. His language is uh, very self-conscious and rely and relies heavily on puns, especially when pretending to be mad. Hamlet uses puns to reveal his true thoughts, uh, while at the same time hiding them. Psychologists uh, have since associated a heavy use of puns with schizophrenia. Hamlet's soliloquies have captured the attention of his scholars as well. Early critics viewed such speeches as to be or not to be, that is the question, as Shakespeare's, uh, uh, Shakespeare's expressions of his own personal beliefs. Later scholars such as Charney have rejected this theory, saying the soliloquies are expressions of Hamlet's thought process. During his speeches, Hamlet interrupts himself, expressing disgust in uh, agreement with himself and uh, embellishing his own source. He has difficulty expressing himself directly and instead skirts around the basic idea of his thought. Not until late in the play, after the experience with pirates, with the pirates, uh, is Hamlet really able to be direct and sure in his speech. The play makes several references to both Catholicism and Protest Protestantism, the two most powerful uh, theological forces of the time in Europe. The ghost describes himself as being in purgatory and as having died without receiving his last rites. This along with Ophelia's burial ceremony, which is uniquely Catholic, make up most of the of the play's Catholic connections. Some scholars have pointed that revenge tragedies were traditionally Catholic, possibly because of their sources. Spain and Italy, both Catholic nations, scholars have pointed out that the knowledge of the place Catholicism can reveal important paradoxes in Hamlet's decision process. 
according to Catholic doctrine. The strongest duty is to God and family. Hamlet's father being killed and calling for revenge thus offers a contradiction. Uh, does he avenge his father and kill Claudius, or does he leave the vengeance to God as his election requires? Dear students, this way my lecture is over, lecture is completed, and I am happy that you have stayed all along, stayed with me all along. Thank you, thank you, dear students, for your patient. Uh, hearing and kind presence and I am very happy that uh, uh, almost not 60% uh, uh, of the students, 60% of the total enrolled students are present here today. So thank you.